we're very pleased with our Q1 results, uh, which include the first quarter of Canadian adult use. Uh, revenue's up 195% year over year uh, to 23 million U.S. dollars, which shows the, the long-term opportunity that we see not only here in Canada, but in other countries around the world. Well, when do you see the, the balance with those other countries around the world ramping up as well to, to the same extent that you've seen in Canada already? I think if you, if you look at our results, you'll see increased, uh, increased revenue from international sales. Uh, and we, we expect to see that continue throughout this year. Uh, Germany is an important emerging market. Um, two weeks ago, I was at our facility in Portugal for a ribbon cutting. Uh, and production at that facility continues to ramp. We expect to begin exporting uh, from Portugal to Germany and other countries in the EU. Uh, let's see in the second half of this year. I mean, you've made a number of acquisitions o over the past few months. How are you going to explain what sort of company you're building to investors? Some of them look medical, some of them in the natural product space. What's the investor pitch? I mean, it's rare that you see an entire industry emerge overnight, and, and that's what we're seeing. We're seeing a $150 to $200 billion industry globally transition from a state of prohibition to a state of legalization. And so there are opportunities uh, in the medical uh, segment of the industry globally. Uh, there are opportunities in, in U.S. CBD, uh, and there are opportunities in adult use as well as uh, hemp food. And so we'll, we'll make investments across uh, all four of those segments based on, on where we think we can generate the most profits. Uh, U.S. CBD is really interesting uh, to us right now, and we'll make investments there in the second half of this year. Brendan, we just showed a, a graphic of some of your recent partnerships, uh, ABI in terms of uh, drinks, Novartis for medical, uh, authentic for, for consumer products. Is that your full slate now? Have, have you covered all the areas uh, where you want to have a big uh, partnership? No, not, not at all. Um, we're very pleased with the partners that we have. Uh, no, to the Sandoz unit of Novartis, uh, AB InBev, and Authentic Brands Group. Uh, but there are other opportunities that, that are out there. Cannabis is disrupting a number of industries. We've mentioned pharmaceuticals. We've mentioned alcohol. Uh, we're starting to see tobacco companies enter the industry. Uh, I think retail is, is the next area where uh, lots of retailers uh, throughout the United States uh, are looking to have cannabis products or products derived from cannabis, primarily CBD, on their shelves. And we hope to have our products on their shelves uh, in the second half of this year. I mean, the stock's all over the place, Brendan, down more than 30% over the last three months, well off the highs that we saw last fall. How, how do you deal and, and speak to investors about the kind of volatility? It still feels like trying to understand how to value, investors are trying to understand how to properly value this business and, and sort of what to trade it off of with wild moves on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, personally, I, I, I tend to ignore the daily fluctuations. I'm a, I'm a long-term shareholder. I'm a large shareholder. And uh, I'm in this for the, for the future. And when it's rare that you see an entire industry emerge overnight. And like any other emerging industry, any other emerging segment that is this large, you're, you're going to see uh, some daily volatility. Um, but our, our objective is to invest for the long term.